Lights, camera, action. This is Universal Studios. We're going on tour to visit Hollywood's largest movie studio, home of Universal Pictures. Cary Grant, Katherine Hepburn, Paul Newman, Robert Redford, Jimmy Stewart, and John Wayne have made motion picture history on this lot. Today, you'll walk in their footsteps. This is Roger Carroll, inviting you to board the Universal Glamour Tram for a guided tour of this historic studio. Let your imagination run wild as we look behind the scenes of motion pictures and television. Your visit to Universal Studios will include a walk through a star's dressing room, a look at over 500 sets, and visits to familiar streets that you've seen hundreds of times. But now, let's go and see how movies are made. Good morning, and welcome to the Universal Studios Tour. My name is Tom, your driver's name is John, and on behalf of MCA, I welcome you to Universal Studios. As we leave the Entertainment Center, we're passing the Universal Amphitheater. This outdoor theater opened in 1972 with a stage production of Jesus Christ Superstar. Universal followed up on that by making a movie of Jesus Christ Superstar the next year. Some of the stars who have performed here are Frank Sinatra, John Denver, Diana Ross, Steve Martin, The Beach Boys, and Sarah Vaughan. As you can see, we're on top of a hill now, and if it looks as though a war had taken place here, it's because our special effects department uses this site to set off explosions, crash cars, and demolish scale models. Part of the dirigible Hindenburg was blown up here for the film of the same name. We also filmed some explosions for the movie Buck Rogers in the 25th century in this area. And now below us, there's a panoramic view of the entire lot. There are 561 buildings and facades on the Universal back lot. Facade is a French word meaning the front of a building. And when we get there, you'll see that many of the solid looking structures that make up our city streets are only fronts, supported by two by fours from the back. Wait a minute, I don't know who you are, but we're not going to go in there. Uh oh. The tram is entering a giant spaceship patterned after Battlestar Galactica. This attraction opened in 1979. It is large enough to allow the four-car glamour tram inside and combines both live and audio animatronic action. The interior of the spaceship is the control center of a Cylon battle cruiser. When the hatch closes behind them, the entire tram and passengers are prisoners. By your command, speak, Centurion. This group of very strange-looking Earth creatures has been captured while attempting a sneak attack on our battleship. Their general is called Tour Guide. I am the Tour Guide. I don't know who you are, but we're not your prisoners. Silence, foolish mortals. Your fate is sealed. What is the standing order of your imperious leader? By your command, the total extermination of the life form known as man. This group will make a tasty meal for our Ovian allies. A position here has been discovered. More humans may follow. Prepare for liftoff. Before I have you scavenged for spare parts. Signal for space travel. Eight. Power station. Six. Ten. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. The 12 colonies of man. I demand the release of the humans. Destroy him. Get out of here. I'll be all right. And the battle continues. Word went forth to all parts of the galaxy. A single heroic colonial warrior had rescued the Earthlings from the very grasp of the evil Cylons. Mankind had one more chance. 
And what do visitors think of this sensational effect? It was, it seemed real. All the lasers going off and everything. It, one might hit me, I was scared. I thought that was very good, the laser beams. I like where the um, Cylons were shooting at the good guy. I just thought it was kind of neat. I liked the effects and the, um, the visual effects and the things falling apart. It was scary when they would shoot the smoke. It's so worth seeing. That was fantastic. Now back to the tram and Tom, where are you? In just a moment, we'll be stopping in front of one of the star's dressing rooms. This entire area is part of Universal City, a city within the county of Los Angeles with its own fire department, post office, hospital, water reservoir, and government. We also have the Sheraton Universal Hotel. It's the only hotel on any motion picture studio lot. If you watch TV, you've seen the hotel many times. It was Rampart Emergency Hospital on the series Emergency. And every time our two paramedics wheeled a victim into the emergency room, they were really entering the ballroom in the lower lobby. The hotel has also been seen on the Hardy Boys as a Hawaiian hotel and as a medical institute on the Bold Ones. But here we are, the first stop on our tour, the dressing rooms. You'll be going through an actual dressing room assigned to Robert Wagner. Walk on through and I'll meet you on the other side. The dressing room plays an important part in an actor's day. This is where he goes to be made up and get dressed in the clothes he'll be wearing in the film. And it doubles as his office. Makeup alone can be a time-consuming task. When Boris Karloff was made up to be the Frankenstein monster, his makeup and costume weighed 70 pounds. He drank his lunch through a straw so the makeup wasn't disturbed. And it took nearly two hours to remove the makeup at the end of the day. Since we like to surprise theatergoers, we didn't want anyone to know what the famous monster looked like. So Mr. Karloff had to walk from his dressing room to the set each day with a paper bag over his head. If you'll step this way, we'll go inside one of the 35 sound stages here on the Universal lot. A sound stage is a giant soundproof room with a high ceiling where most filming actually takes place. At Universal, there are 35 of these film stages. The largest of them, number 12, is as big as a football field. It was the stage used for filming the Concorde, Airport 79. But let's go inside. In 1925, the Phantom of the Opera was filmed on stage 28 right next door. The gilt opera boxes from that movie are still there, and we use them for new films from time to time. Back in silent film days, though, old stage 28 didn't have a roof because extraneous noise didn't make any difference. And sunlight provided all of the illumination instead of those great big lights we now use. Of course, that's why California was chosen for movie making in the first place, because there are so many sunny days here. Now, of course, the building has a roof on it, and it's soundproof. It's the location where we shot the 1979 comedy hit In God We Trust, starring Marty Feldman. But enough of that. I promised to show you some of the secrets of filmmaking, so please step this way. The tour learns how a painted background can be combined with a live action scene. It's called matte process photography. Using oil paint on a glass sheet, universal artists paint exotic backgrounds that would be impossible to duplicate. A field of oil derricks, the Kremlin, or Old New York are examples. Do you know how the painted background ends up being combined with live action? I'll have the answer in just a few minutes. Right now, the tour is enjoying another Universal special effect, rear screen projection. Okay, we have a volunteer from the audience, and your name is? Chris. Okay, Chris, now climb up on the motorcycle. When I yell, action, I want you to put your feet on the pedals, grab the handlebars, and bounce up and down. Are you ready? While Chris is bouncing up and down on a spring-mounted stationary motorcycle, moving scenes that were actually filmed on the Pasadena freeway will be shown behind him. The boy, bike, and background will all be picked up by closed-circuit cameras and shown to the audience. Okay, action! Bounce harder, Chris. Corner around the corner now. Lean it away. Watch where you're going. Now stare with one hand, Chris. Now 
No hands at 75 miles an hour. Now get ready for your big stunt. You're about to jump off your bike and stand by it. You're ready? Off. What an act. 75 miles an hour on the freeway. Jumps off without stopping and not a scratch. Let's hear it for Chris. The rear screen effect works because the camera is monoscopic. It has one eye. Therefore, it has no depth perception, and it can't tell there is distance between the rider and the rear projection. So it combines the background with the live action in front of it, giving the appearance of an actor riding on a freeway. Watching the film in a theater, the illusion would be complete, a fantasy created by the universal filmmaker. And speaking of illusion and fantasy, that's what takes place next. So let's enter the six million dollar man bionic woman test center. Here's your chance to imagine what it would be like to be fitted with bionic parts. Hi everybody, welcome to Universal Six Million Dollar Man Bionic Woman Testing Center. My name is Judy and I'm the supervisor of the center. We've been working with top doctors, scientists and engineers on a revolutionary new technique for implanting bionic components into ordinary people. We've taken two members out of your group and have given them some of these instant bionic components. Okay, our Six Million Dollar Man. For this next demonstration, Michael, we're going to be using this truck here. But no one will believe me if I tell them it's a real truck because I work here. But they'll believe you as a representative from the group. So why don't you go ahead and check it out for them. Prove to them that it is a real truck. Bang on it. Let them hear they're perfect. Okay. Show them the hood is real. Bang the fender. <laughs> Get away from my truck. <laughs> I said check the truck, not wreck the truck. There's a difference. Uh, problem is I don't have a jack. I've only got a brace. But hey, you've got bionic arms, so why don't you lift it up for me? I'll put the brace under and fix it later, okay? There you go. Okay, hold it up there. Take pictures, folks. You don't see this every day. I'll put the brace under, and you can lower it down slowly now. And there it is. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you, Michael. Corey, there's a bunch of bad guys chasing you. They're out to get you. To get away from them, you have to jump over that airplane. So get in the ready position. We're waiting for clearance from the tower. We don't want you to hit any low-flying helicopters. And up. Bring your arms up. Hold them up there. And down. Perfect. You can take a seat now. I'm sure Colonel Steve Boston couldn't have done it any better than that. As the tour leaves the soundstage, they leave one of the hardest working areas on the Universal lot. Every precaution has been taken in each stage to ensure the ultimate environment for movie making. The walls of each building are six inches of poured concrete covered by three layers of fiberglass soundproofing and a layer of asbestos for fireproofing, and all held in place by what is known as Hollywood wallpaper, better known as chicken wire. A soundstage provides control of three vital concerns of the director. Sound, light, and weather. Both indoor and outdoor scenes are shot here. The doors to each stage weigh five tons apiece. But let's see how much you remember about movie making. You may want to stop the record and see if you can answer these questions. What's a matte painting? Why does it take so long to shoot a short scene? How does heat affect filming? How much film does a camera hold? Now with the answers, here are some of the people on our tour. Do you have any idea how much film is shot in a day? Ten minutes, I think it was a day. What is a matte painting? Do you remember what a matte painting is and how it works? Well, you block out a certain portion of the raw film and then uh, rerun the film and photograph another portion. You can then uh, photograph uh, scenery without going to the location because you're using uh, artificial background. Why does it take so long to shoot a, a short scene in a motion picture? Any idea? Do you remember what they told you? Yeah, they said that uh, when you have all the makeup on, the lights, after you're in the lights for a long time, that the makeup will start running down your face, so they bring in the air conditioners and cool the place down. You know, the next question was, how does heat affect filmmaking? <laughs> so you, you answered that pretty good. In the Bionic Woman sequence, you saw someone jump over an airplane. Do you think you could really jump 50 feet with one bound? 
If John Travolta was standing on the other side, I'm sure he could. There's a lot to see and enjoy at Universal Studios.